Good morning, TikTok. Uh, it's your friendly American Indian and lawyer, Chumahan. Bowen coming to you this morning with uh, praise, praise, and glory for uh, another day <clears throat> in this uh, bizarre world in which we find ourselves, which so many of us feel. <laughs> So many of us feel powerless, right? Like, how are we supposed to compete with these giant machines and the society? But it doesn't matter. I, I really wanted to... Let me make myself smaller here. It's cool as I can move my shit around. Look at this. I can move my shit... I'm upside down! I can move my shit around in here. Um, I wanted to talk about the theater of, of international politics, theater of war. You know the play that's going on and I just got to say like you know Biden's uh, surprise visit to the Ukraine I think really changes the nature of the upcoming campaigns I mean <clears throat> it does so many things very quickly number one it of course answers the question of whether or not he still got his marbles you know he's 80 years old does he still got his marbles can he still run does he have Alzheimer's you know, do, do they have to shock him in the neck with a cattle prod to make him talk, right? Is he a puppet? Is he, is he able to even do anything? And so clearly he can't. He shows up in a war, you know, in a war zone. Showed, showed up in a war zone. And, you know, you look at these images and you know for a fact that these they sent photographers and they probably mapped out every area that he'd go. They probably mapped it out. So that you get these iconic shots, right? There's, there's the American president in a business suit. <laughs> and everyone else is in fatigues. Think about the messages that we're sending, right? And this might actually be also part of the psyops against Russia and Putin, right? How better to undermine Putin who fancies himself to be, right? The most brilliant bureaucrat in control of war machines than anyone in the entire world and then of course uh made the oldest president of the united states uh shows up in a business suit while everyone else is in military fatigue you know you know that shot's perfectly set up to have a combatant guy there right to all outfitted like so that guy needs war that guy needs camo that guy needs guns that guy needs a canteen uh, but Biden just needs an overcoat and some fucking aviators. Well, clearly, this is a, a flex, a, a mega flex, macro flex. We're going to call this a macro flex. And look at these images down here, right? And that image over there. Also, <clears throat> it's an iconic image to show the rest of the world that the Americans will show up in person, in person, <clears throat> to support them against, you know, cruel dictators abroad. Now, listen, listen. Now, that's pure propaganda, right? Pure propaganda. Because, obviously, if the dictator's on our side, we won't do that. I don't believe uh, anyone showed up in Afghanistan, right? You didn't see Biden in Afghanistan. You didn't see, um, you know, Biden in Mexico, narco state. You know, we didn't see Biden in... So, so clearly, if it's Europe and it's NATO, right, it's all of our sort of traditional friends that kind of fall in line with sort of the West's, you know, hegemony, takeover, power hold on, on the rest of the world, uh, we'll send somebody over. It's just that this trip accomplished so many things uh, in such a short amount of time. The real question is exactly what went into all of planning this and how long in advance had they determined this, right? The way this is all set up, it kind of seems like it just sort of, it's part of the natural moment, but it was set at the one year mark. And I would imagine that probably six months ago, maybe even the entire year they were planning. Now I've read some early reports about how this was all accomplished. And to be honest with you, I have no idea. I don't even know if the reports are correct. I mean, th that could all be propaganda as well. So, um, reports, right? They did say, some reporting said that they gave Moscow a heads up at some point, right? I mean, imagine that. The State Department calls Putin's State Department and says, listen, the number one enemy is coming to the Ukraine. You better not 
fuck around. Did that really happen? I don't know. I don't know. Certainly, it shows that also with this stroke, uh, this it shows that whatever assets our enemies think they have to, mm, you know, know what we're going to plan next, whether they knew or they didn't know, the fact that this is unimpeded shows. Now, <clears throat> that there are the assets in other countries may not actually be able to predict what we're going to do. Also, this shows to a certain extent, right, that uh, the power projection of the United States projecting. So for for a for a propagandistic sort of thing for the theater and the psychology of the world, you can kind of see that we're showing the world that our power is so forward projecting that we can send, you know, an elderly leader directly to the front, almost to the front. And to be honest with you, I don't really know where Kiev is in relation to to quote unquote the front, but safe to say. Now this is also a taunt, right? Uh, Putin's whole gambit is to say, yeah, well, I might use nukes, fingers on the nukes. Would be a shame if we all melted down in an apocalypse and keep fucking around. And this of course is calling Putin's bluff. What's his next move? What would be Putin's next move and how? Would Putin remain in power with his generals and the people if he's unable to scare away the American president from visiting? This is such a... Now, I'm not even accrediting this move to Biden, right? I'm not saying that. Mike actually could be any president in that situation. And the intelligence and the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the military and thinking about the PSYOPs aspect of this war... Maybe, just maybe, they would have said, yeah, we got to send the president to the front. <laughs> send the president to the front um, as another sort of gut punch and to the other side to weaken their resolve, to break the, the mental stranglehold, let's say, that Putin has on his people re uh, and uh, reassure our allies. And of course, completely dominate the news cycle. You know, you can't, and, you know, there's no conspiracy on this one. You know, they can't say that Biden was airbrushed in. They can't say that all of this stuff behind him was a green screen. They can't say any of that. And at the end of the day, the genius aspect of this bit of psyops is at the end of the day, whether it was pre-planned, whether it's not really as dangerous as anyone really thinks, all these different things. And remember, we've set up the danger by sh showing all the images of burned out tanks and, you know, destroyed cities and collapsed buildings and all that stuff, right? So, you know, the images, the, the actual reality on the ground, we don't know. And this is coming just as winter thaws out a little bit and fighting begins. But really think, really think, really think, right? And you can take all that away. And at the end of the day, the president really showed up there. It's just, I don't know how much more, you know, I don't even know who can run again. I, I don't, wouldn't, I mean, how could DeSantis, how could anyone run against this guy at this point, right? Um, it's very interesting. Now, look, yeah, I'm a Democrat, but I really wanted to sort of evaluate this. And then, of course, look at the images all around. He's taller. You got angels or whatever the fuck that is in the background. You got guys in fatigues and you got the American president chief executive officer of the world is what he's projecting right here. Chief executive officer in the world who's willing to take risks and pay his respects. It's an incredible piece of theater.